but welcome back to grinding. We're gonna do it again. The industry I came from, everything that I've ground was round. I would take it from round to round. Today we're gonna take something round and put 12 sides on it and 16 sides on it. Basically a dodecagon. A dodecagon on the dodecagon. It's a long thing to memorize, dog. Dodecagon. Spell that. I can't even spell it, but I can grind it. The <laughs> <laughs> so dodecagon is a 12-sided polygon, and on this OD we're gonna put a hexacatagon which is a 16-sided polygon. If you know how to pronounce it, leave a comment below. I know I butchered it. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be doing high-speed form grinding. The regular OD grinding, the part is spinning continuously and the wheel is in full contact with the part. With high-speed form grinding, the wheel is actually gonna follow the shape of the part that you made. That means that wheel is gonna come in and grind, the part is gonna come out, that part's gonna rotate, it's gonna come back and grind again until the desired shape is accomplished. So for this process, we're gonna use a test piece made out of O2 hardened tool steel. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna true up this OD and this OD, we're actually gonna clean up this face and clean up this face. Let's go ahead and load our part in our three jaw chuck, set our zero, do a minimum cleanup, and go ahead and program our first dodecagon. So basically what I've done up to this point, as I move my wheel where I wanted it in X and over where I wanted it in Z. Where I'm putting it in Z is this, they call it a grind relief. So I want it just over that grind relief. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting my X zero and my Z zero. I've got the wheel into position. We're gonna go into setup. So right here, it wants us to move close to the workpiece diameter. We got ahead of the game by getting already close to that workpiece before we went to this screen. So from here, I just hit position okay. Same thing, I already got the wheel exactly where I want it. So we're gonna hit position okay. From here, we're gonna go ahead and close the door, cycle start again. As you see the wheel move back, it's gonna turn on. For safety, I always like to come in on my work pieces with a dead wheel. You always wanna do that. It says approach and touch the workpiece diameter. So we're gonna turn our wheel on. We're gonna use 10th increments to move down in X to get a full cleanup. We're gonna be utilizing our Sensitron so we can know when we have a full cleanup. So there's our Sensitron. So it looks like we got a full cleanup. Position okay. Now the wheel's gonna go back and it's gonna come down into our Z zero. Once again, we're gonna turn our wheel off. So since I positioned my wheel right in that grind relief, I don't have to move it over to Z because I set my Z zero exactly where I want it. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and hit position okay. And we just set our Z position. We're gonna open our doors, check X, put in Z zero, that's the Z position we wanna use. And then our part is gonna be registered. So as you can see, I got a full cleanup on the part. So to check our part, we're gonna use our Mita Toyo 2-3 to three OD mic. So I just took a mic to my part. I got 2.848. We'll go ahead and put that in our X. 2.848 for Z. I don't want my Z to shift, so we're gonna do Z zero. 0, 0. So our part is now zeroed. Let's go ahead and give it a full cleanup and start working on our Decagon. As you can see in Z, since it's a straight plunge, it's just gonna plunge straight down and not move in Z. So I programmed it that way because the top of that OD is very close to the, to the jaws of that chip. So another reason why I wanted to do a minimum cleanup over this entire part is that it's just so bad out of round from the heat treat process that if you try to do something complex such as a polygon on it, the wheel's not gonna be in full contact with it. Looks good. 
parts screwed up, let's go ahead and put our dodecagon on that small OD. All right guys, so now I'm gonna show you a simplified version of how I wrote Studer's high speed form grinding. If you wanna see exactly how I've done it, check out our Titans of CNC Grinding Academy. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to programming. Then I'm gonna go to Studer high speed form grinding integrated. From here, it's all different types of shapes that I can select from. Anything y'all wanna see, leave a comment below and I can make it happen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a polygon. We're gonna make it 12 sided. That means there's 12 sides along that polygon. The diameter is gonna be 2.820 thousandths. Execute. So now I told Studer exactly how many sides I want and the size that I want from point to point, which is DE. 12 sides. We trying to grind 12 sides over here, man. <laughs> That's all I got. One inch deep. Ain't gonna have no material left, I guess. So now that our Studer has calculated our feed for us, we're gonna hit execute. We'll go into further detail in our CNC Grinding Academy. So now with all those variables inputted, now we can dry run our program and get to grind. So we just finished our dodecagon and we just programmed our hexacatagon. We got our macro downloaded, we got our part zero, we've already dead wheeled our program. Let's go grind this. There it goes. Never in my life would I thought I would be grinding a polygon on a cylindrical grinder. You can already start to see the flats on it. So the left side of the wheel is getting pretty flooded, the right side of the wheel is getting pretty flooded, and the center has a nice overspray. So that entire area being ground is getting a nice coolant flow, minimizing sparks and really washing away that swarf, creating a very good grinding environment. So I know you get this overspray because in the world of grinding, it's not like you know a mill or a lathe when you, where you're hearing the chips. Like every other machinist in here and every other machinist, they find a spot on that, on that window where they can get a good view of their part and their tool and they can really watch what's going on. You know, basically checking for burns, checking for chatter. Those flats are getting longer, so that means they're getting deeper. You can really see it on the Sensitron increasing with each end feed. They were just under that halfway line. Now they're starting to peek over it. What the Sensitron does, it lets me know when the wheel is in full contact with the part. That's what I'm seeing by these peaks. That's like my heartbeat on like eight cups of coffee. So now we're above the line and it looks like it's about to start sparking out. Just finished our hexacatagon. We first completed the, uh, what's that called? The dodecagon. 
You might be asking yourself, why is that important? Why would you make a polygon on a round object? Well, this is for demonstration, you know. This is how they make camshafts. I personally had a lot of fun programming this part. There's two separate macros. There's two different ODs, one zero. I'm amazed at what the Studer can do. The Studer S41 does a phenomenal job of teaching me something every day. I'm really excited to show that to y'all. I've been cylindrical grinding for a few years now, but I've never taken a round part and made a polygon. And it just looks really cool, like a little disco ball. I'm super proud of it. It was a lot of fun to program. I hope y'all learned something. Uh, you got any questions on how I did anything, check out our CNC Grind Academy or leave a comment down below. Like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more grinding.